I'm, I'm really honored to be here in this fantastic meeting with my friend Christoph Palm. I know I'm the only exotic, uh, exotic uh, physician here, but I think it's uh, perhaps it's helpful for you to give you all the feedback from the uh, medical uh, doctors. Um, what, what does AI, how does AI influence our daily practice? Um, the question is, do we need AI in endoscopy? And um, as you see here, I have uh, three topics where I think AI can help us. It um, is for sure important to improve quality of our daily work. Um, it helps us to train fellows. And uh, one of the other very important point is the cost savings. Um, I will start with a short video and uh, Christoph Palm, when I met him first time, I tried to explain what is a Barrett's esophagus. And this is a typical Barrett's esophagus. It's a esophagus where there is an increased risk to develop cancer. And you see a regular mucosa and, um, and, and here this is a regular squamous epithelium. But um, I, I really would be uh, uh, surprised if you as non-physician would see here any abnormalities or you would detect the cancer in this situation. Though the aim is to improve our daily uh, endoscopy quality by detecting small lesions. And if we find small lesions, um, then for example, as shown here, this is a upper GI endoscopy in the stomach. And this is um, the pylorus and you see here a small lesion. This is um, gastric cancer. And with different techniques um, of visualization, uh, we, we can uh, demarcate these lesions and we re can resect meanwhile these lesions endoscopically and no need for surgery. This is uh, improvement in quality of life of our, for our patient, but it's necessary to find this lesion and then you can resect with a special technique which came from Asia, from Japan, and we are collaborating with a couple of centers in Asia to, to uh, detect and to find these lesions. And meanwhile, in Augsburg, we have the largest series in Europe treating such small lesions. Though, before starting now um, with AI and endoscopy, I, I will talk about uh, some uh, cost-effective uh, uh, points. So, what what are we able, or what would we happy to spend for one uh, life year? Uh, uh, is there a cost limitation? Um, looking here, you can see um, the United States, for example, spend the most money for a healthcare system, followed by Switzerland, and number three worldwide is Germany. Um, but looking at the outcome, uh, for example, the life expectancy, Germany is somewhere uh, average uh, with the OECD countries um, being here. This green point is Austria. You see here Switzerland and um, the, the, the longest life expectancy is in Japan, but they don't spend as much money as, um, for example, Germany or other countries. So how can we save money? Um, and to answer this question, we need to know why are and uh, what are the reasons people die. Um, in Germany, cancer is on the second place uh, for causes of death. And if we look at the cancer death rate in Germany, you see that uh, the uh, colon cancer is on the third place for men and women, followed by pancreatic cancer, gastric cancer, esophageal cancer, liver cancer. Um, how can we avoid these uh, cancers? So, for example, by doing a screening colonoscopy, we can detect uh, early cancers in the colon or, or precancerous lesions like polyps. And also, if we do aperture endoscopy, in the we can pick up lesions in the stomach, um, in the mouth, in the hyperpharynx, or in the esophagus. So, there is obviously a, a chance to pick up early lesions, which could be cost-effective. Talking about cost-effectiveness, you should know the name of quality-adjusted life. What, what does this mean? That means a quality is one year of life um, with a special life quality. And this life quality is somewhere between zero and one. So in perfect health, it's one. If you are dead, it's zero. So if you, if you live 
one year with uh, blindness. So the score would be 0.39, though uh, Corley is 0.39. Um, this chart show, demonstrates on the x-axis, this is um, the lifetime, and here is quality of life. And over your lifetime, your quality of life decreases, you live and then you die here. If you want to gain some qualities, then you can improve your quality of life or you can expand your life expectancy. And the difference is the gained quality of life. And uh, showing here, the difference between the cost and the efficacy of an intervention demonstrates the so-called ICER. And the, the cost which are international accepted is 50,000 euro per year. It's not a, 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 a cost which is official in Germany, but anyway, if we're talking about cancer prevention, it should not expand, extend to more than 50,000 euro or, or dollars per year. Here are some examples of cancer prevention. Um, to avoid breast cancer, if you do a mammography every two years, it's very cheap, uh, it's cost effective. If you do uh, um, a liver cancer screening in patients with liver cirrhosis by doing ultrasound and tumor markers, uh, it's increasing, it's not cost effective regarding with 50,000 euro. And doing surveillance colonoscopy in patients with ulcerative colitis, which is a uh, inflammatory bowel disease, um, it's obviously definitely not cost effective. And even human papilloma virus vaccination for young girls is not cost effective from the economic situation. Um, looking at endoscopy, by combining aperture endoscopy with screening colonoscopy, it's somewhere about 100,000 euro. But this is a model and uh, we can decrease the cost by doing um, minimal invasive surgery like endoscopy and perhaps it can become cost effective and screening colonoscopy as performed in Germany um, it's definitely cost effective with less than 50,000 euro. Now to pick up and to detect lesion um, this are the main four tasks if we talk about um, early GI neoplasia. You, you have to detect lesions, you have to delineate the lesion, differentiate and stage the lesion. So detection is sometimes very cumbersome and difficult. It's uh, like the, the, the needle in hay. You have to pick it up and it is not so easy. And uh, showing here some fluorescence endoscopy studies which make non-visible lesions visible or the delineation as showing here with special endoscopy equipment, you can delineate the lesion very precisely. If you find a lesion, then the next step is to differentiate. Is it a malignant lesion? Is it an inflammatory lesion? And finally, if you have a lesion which is malignant, then it's necessary to know uh, is this an early lesion or advanced because you have to treat the lesion either by surgery or you can treat it endoscopically. <clears throat> so European society uh, made some efforts to improve quality. And I show you here, this for example is a paper on quality improvement in lower GI tract. And one key point is how to find lesions in the colon, the so-called adenoma detection rate. Uh, every endoscopy sh should have an adenoma detection rate beyond 25%. That means uh, in 25% of his procedures, he should find polyps. If it's lower, he sh has to increase his skills. Um, and then if he picks up a lesion, he should differentiate this lesion because not every a uh, polyp is a, a pre-malignant lesion. For example, we divide uh, polyps in three types, as shown by the NICE classification. We have the type 1, which is totally different from type 2, looking at the color, at the vessels, at the surface pattern of these lesions. And experts are able to differentiate this polyp, which is a hyperplastic and is not malignant and needs no treatment from cis polyp, which is a adenoma. Cis can be can cancer and has to be resected. And this is cancer. This needs, needs definitely surgery. So artificial intelligence is now present. We can use it 
in our daily practice. We have nine different tools to detect and differentiate lesions. We don't have any tools for the aperture eye tract. Um, CAT-E means uh, computer assisted detection. These are systems which are helpful in detecting polyps. CADX means computer assisted differentiation. So you can differentiate a hyperplastic polyp from a adenoma, which is a premalignant lesion. I show you one of the first um, um, systems. This is uh, so-called um, endobrain from Japan. And with this equipment, the uh, group in Tokyo was able to differentiate polyps by using the, the vessel structure. So uh, this typical vessel structure uh, was helpful to differentiate a adenoma from a hyperplastic polyp and the sensitivity and specificity was uh, really great. So in this situation, neoplastic lesion means adenoma in 99%. Um, oops. And um, an example of uh, picking up lesion is shown here by uh, a system from Medtronic. Um, and this marks lesions. Uh, it does not differentiate. It just demarcates lesion, uh, which sometimes are difficult to detect. Um, this first trial by uh, Professor Hassan showed a high sensitivity, low false positive rate, and a very quick and fast reaction time of the system. Uh, another tool uh, from a group in Vancouver, um, this has a detection mode and a differentiation mode. Is, uh, at the moment it's not available in, in Europe, it, it will be available soon in, um, in, um, in the States. This is a detection mode. It picks up the lesions and then you can switch on your colonoscope button and it shows this is an adenoma and needs to be treated for example, with snare resection. And this polyp, it looks a little bit different, even for non-experts. And it says, no, it's not an adenoma, and no treatment um, is necessary. So although for this study, excellent data, more than 90% of accuracy, so very promising results. Finally, another tool from another company. Uh, this is uh, the system from Fujifilm. It also combines detection mode with a differentiation mode. So meanwhile, different companies have this tool available. Uh, looking here, this is picking up the lesion here. And we can then switch to the differentiation mode. And in this situation, you see here the information, it's a neoplastic lesion. And finally, um, since we have different companies the fourth company from Olympus is also a system which um, just detects the, the lesion. It does not differentiate. This is the NBI mode. Go back and, and uh, as you can see here, this is a large polyp and is also for sure detectable with this systems. Now, what about the data? Um, is it necessary? Is it helpful? There are four, five randomized trials mainly coming from China, one is from Europe, and they found the detection rate for small polyps, smaller than five millimeter, um, is significant. It's not significant for polyps larger than 10 millimeter or somewhere between six to nine millimeter. So it's questionable, uh, is it of uh, clinical relevance to detect such small polyps? There are some uh, criticism to say, well, we don't need this. Um, on the other hand, there are data Comparing is AI helpful in the differentiation of polyps? This is the endobrain system. And in this studies, non-experts, experts, and the computer system uh, compared their uh, accuracy or sensitivity, specificity regarding the differentiation of polyps. And you see endobrain was superior uh, for non-experts and um, experts as well. And also in training, uh, AI was helpful. So this trial showed that a novice, an expert, and a super expert, there is a difference with uh, non-assisted uh, detection, but using AI they, uh, was also uh, an, an improvement. And uh, the people were trained. The novice were 
much had a much better improvement of their skill compared to the super experts but even the expert had a training effect so this is obviously also a, a, a very helpful tool for our daily practice and now what about costs um, with the detection system you detect more polyps for sure you polybectomy polyps and it's questionable uh, with the small tiny polyps are there really a uh, danger um, on the other side, we know if we, if we perform um, polybectomies, if we have a high adenoma detection rate, we have a kind of cancer prevention, this reduces the cost. And finally, if we differentiate the polyps, um, not all the polyps need a polybectomy, we can save costs. So obviously, and this is a model, um, we seem, it seems to be cost effective for colonoscopy and there are two scenarios in this trial. Scenario one, you diagnose a polyp and leave it if it's a hyperplastic and scenario two, you resect all polyps regardless what kind of histology is it. These are the data for the computer system to differentiate sensitivity, specificity and looking in different countries, the health care costs are different but all this system showed that if you resect uh, the polyp or you don't resect, you leave a polyp in place which is not malignant, then you save a lot of money. So there is obviously a huge impact on healthcare costs uh, for different countries. Um, this is a nice study from, from uh, China, uh, a colonoscopy with a speedometer. So uh, the speedometer was in the AI group and the adenoma detection rate was higher than in the non-AI group. So a significant improve of detecting polyps. And what is behind the speedometer? So this is, gives you an information how fast you withdraw your colonoscope. So usually it should take six to seven minutes when you withdraw your colonoscope from the cecum to the end of the colon. If you are too fast, then the system tells you in the red bar here, uh, slow down your speed, you are too fast and you will uh, not detect all polyps. If you're in the green bar, uh, it shows this is a, um, a optimal withdrawal time and the chance to pick up um, the lesions is much higher. And if you have additional uh, in this system, not only the speedometer, but also the detection system, then you are definitely very, very effective, um, very uh, new data from Japan. Now, our society uh, recommends AI as a helpful tool. It's at the moment a weak recommendation, but I think it has potential for the future. Now, in my next uh, couple of minutes, in the next couple of minutes, I will focus on, on, on Barrett's esophagus because this is uh, our research field and I'm working together with Christoph Palms and his team on this field since years. The Barrett cancer is a special type of um, esophageal cancer and this is a cancer in the Western world which increases at the moment uh, maximal. So this is again an example of a Barrett uh, lesion and uh, experts will pick up this lesion very uh, uh, precisely uh, this is a regular bird, but looking here, again, a non-expert will have difficulties to pick up this lesion here. And you know this video uh, from my introduction. Um, there is a cancer, and now I show you the cancer um, is, is up here. It's, it's a, a lesion on the upper part of the esophagus and with different staining methods you can pick up this lesion. Uh, another example showing a lesion here with staining and then you pick up the lesion. Now the question is, and this is a group of Barrett experts and I was honored to be part of this group, um, the question was can we differentiate uh, a normal, normal Barrett mucosa from an abnormal Barrett mucosa? And, and if we want to differentiate, we look at the mucosa the surface and we look at the vascular structure and the morphological characteristics are shown here and this is uh, uh, so difficult to explain so we need a, a, a very simple, a physician needs a very very simple uh, classification system 
to, to use it in daily practice. So the classification was just regular or irregular. And this is also uh, what is shown here in these examples. This is a regular mucosal pattern. This is irregular. This is a regular vascular structure, like a honeycomb. And this is irregular, yeah? corkscrew vessels. So to differentiate um, and to train people, you should look at the vessel and the surface structure. And these experts showed with a high confidence, yes, it is possible. But anyway, um, I think computer can do better. And um, uh, in our first trial, we, we, we trained uh, or we used still images to differentiate by using, um, and this is for sure nothing new for you, we trained computer with still images and compared our data with the computer and you see the, the sensitivity was much better than my endoscopists in Augsburg. So a first, a first promising a study showing that AI is helpful uh, in picking up abnormal uh, structures in the esophagus. And the next step was to use real-time real prediction. In this study, we had a videos, and this showed you the, 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 the setup. Uh, during the procedure, you see endoscopic, the endoscopic view. This is the study nurse. And, and here is the, the computer uh, image um, with a eye system connected. And now, um, if you find a lesion where you think, well, um, shall I take a biopsy? If you use the AI uh, mode, then it has a prediction of 99% that this is cancer. And for sure, you need now or you need not a biopsy. And <clears throat> uh, it's also helpful in, in uh, avoiding uh, uh, unnecessary biopsies. Um, Oops. Sorry. So again, here in comparison, uh, the regular image, and here is the computer image with AI, and it picks up uh, the abnormal lesions. And if you are in an area where it's normal mucosa, the computer will also um, uh, inform you this is a regular mucosa, no biopsy is necessary. So this is from a um, live endoscopy meeting, um, and it was the first time where we showed worldwide that um, AI was helpful in picking up lesions in the Barrett's. And there is a small subtle lesion here. Um, a non-expert will be not able to pick up this lesion, but this system was quite helpful uh, in this situation. The next step is um, if we find the lesion, we want to treat this lesion. And this is a, a helpful tool differentiating a superficial from a non-superficial cancer. If it's superficial, you can resect it endoscopically. If it's a non-superficial, it's submucosal, the risk for lymph node increases. And we also trained the computer uh, with uh, images. And in this study, we saw that the accuracy was similar for experts and from the computer. Uh, still, I would say, uh, um, uh, data which can be improved, but uh, the expert will not improve uh, 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 in the same way as a computer can be trained with much more images and data. Um, coming now to my end of my talk, there are also some uh, non-malignant diseases in endoscopy, like showing here, eosinophilic esophagitis is a kind of allergic disease. Um, patients have problems by swallowing. Um, and uh, usually you see nothing. It is a normal esophagus. But if you take biopsies, it will show you this is abnormal. But in our preliminary data, we could find that the computer was able uh, to pick up this very small abnormalities, although here showing images from a small bowel in patients with a gluten uh, uh, sensitivity. So although here some promising data, and finally, Endoscopic ultrasound can also be a tool. It's a combination of endoscopy plus sonography. Um, it's a very uh, 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 time-consuming procedure, and it helps us um, to pick up lesions in the, in the pancreas, in the bile duct. And uh, these are data from, from, uh, from China, and it shows that it is helpful in delineating, for example, the pancreas. For trainees, it's much more 
difficult to find the structures so ERC, uh, EOS uh, can be an option. And finally, all the ERCP, this is a, an example of how we treat patients with bile duct stones in the, in the bile duct. And AI was helpful in predicting how to use special equipments to remove stones. Now, this is my last slide. Uh, another of couple um, uh, indications, for example, esophageal varices to, to find blind spots during endoscopy, to differentiate cancer, to, to optimize bowel preparation, or even to um, guide with AI resection can be helpful. So I think AI is not a vision, it's here. We need AI. We need. We have it in the colonoscopy. We we are now in the upper chair endoscopy, ERCP, EOS. We need it for teaching, quality improvement, and I'm sure it will help us to save costs. And um, Christoph, this was two years ago uh, in Augsburg. It was before COVID. Uh, 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 yeah, changed our world uh, with 1,000 participants in the Congress Center. Unfortunately, this is at the moment not possible. Uh, but I hope our our uh, collaboration will not be uh, 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 influenced by this uh, pandemia. We started in 2014. Uh, we are working together, as shown here, uh, since years, and we enjoying also uh, uh, in in some ways our our results of our daily research. So thanks a lot for your attention. I'm happy to answer some questions.